Hey, what's up, you guys? It's me, Khatfo Macy. Welcome back to another video of The Letter, another gameplay video. I enjoyed it so much last time. The, the, um, the story was getting so good that I thought I'm just going to continue with it. Some of you guys are dropping me some really nice comments that you like it so much. So I think I'm actually going to finish it. So yeah, I hope. I hope you guys continue to enjoy it and leave me comments and, and suggestions and, you know, I'm always open to advice as well. So, that's always awesome. Not that there is much need for advice here because it's just click and play. But you have to decide, like make choices and things like that. So, let's just continue with it. So, without further ado, the letter, part, infinity, into the distance and far away. With Gat for Macy. Hope you guys enjoy. See you at the end of the video. Got my water, got my snacks, I'm ready. Let's go. Peanuts and raisins. My favorite. Ah, okay. Yeah, I remember this is where we were. We were going in the kitchen last time. Um, that's what I keep telling myself. Although I can't ignore the strange feeling in my gut. Either there is something wrong with this house, or there is something wrong with my head. There is something wrong with this house! Shit. This should have been obvious. Sleep will be elusive tonight. October 28th, Friday. So pretty! Luke is already gone by the time I rise. There isn't a single hide nor hair of him to be found, and trying to call him on his mobile is a bust, as it only goes straight to his voicemail. That's twice in a row he's gone on me, and for him to disappear today of all days is every bit upsetting because of what's to come. What's coming? What's to come? The morning is once again filled with a whirlwind of activity. Fortunately, I'm much more refreshed as we, well, I took a break from my responsibilities. I haven't the faintest clue where Luke was yesterday. Today is going to be a busy day, although unlike ye Wednesday, the master of the house isn't here right now absent once again from his duties hopefully he'll be back in time for the party oh yeah the party's up this is our house after all a grand housewarming party for the wonderful Wright mansion every person of importance from Luxbourne is invited and there will be a few guests flying in as well of course there will be some people from the media along with friends and acquaintances who are made no less important regardless of their status in a society Ah, Marianne and I discuss business and last minute, and minute touches to the house before finalizing everything. Not that there is much change from our original plans. Okay. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous and in such a short time, too. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the right mansion. The right mansion. Get it? The right. This is the right. It's not. It's the wrong mansion. It's the wrong mansion. Wrong mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Why is she doing this? Like, like she's scared or something. Luke and I had a small tiff about making the second bedroom into a child's playroom, which I insisted is completely practical. In the end, he had to... I don't know what that word is. <laughs> A queer, a quist, a qu uh, a queer. I can't. I don't know. I, I don't know. A queer, a I don't have Google in front of me. Uh, that's that's something new. What does it mean? I didn't give him any choice in the matter. Okay, so he was fighting her on it. That's not a word. Is that a word? I don't know what it is. Please help me guys. I, I don't know. Okay, moving on. I even bought this wonderful wooden crib from the antique store yesterday, including some toys. Yo? Okay. Jeez. Just in case anyone brings their baby, of course. Yeah, great excuse there. She just wants a child. That's what the, the whole thing is. Besides, we have little need for actual guest rooms. We hardly have guests who spend the night. If we absolutely have to, we often choose to foot the bill for their visit on one of our hotels instead. 
always at Luke's own insistence. And on the off chance that we actually let someone stay, the bedroom in the opposite wing is still up to the task. Oh no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. Yeah, go ahead. I don't care what the bloody bastard was to say. Just you you do what I say. I'm the madam here. I'm, I'm the lady of the house. I've got feelings. <laughs> I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. No, I did not agree to him having a helipad. All right, then. Okay, cool. Well, do we have any other concerns? Anything we need to put on our agenda before the party commences? No, I don't think so. Not unless Luke has anything else to say. Ooh, she is not in good terms with with her husband. Is he around then? <clears throat> It'd be best if we can note down his request right away considering the scope of his usual ones. Around? No. Where is he? Who knows where? I don't. No, he's not around. She didn't have to point out the obvious now, did she? After seven long years, I'd already gotten used to him. I should be by now. Still not, apparently. But don't you have a party? He's not here, okay? He doesn't want to be here, he doesn't love me anymore, let's just bloody move on. I want nothing more than to complain, to whinge about how unfair this is. However, airing out one's dirty laundry is simply taboo among high society. To do so will make you a ripe target for the next dinner party chit-chat. We all hate that, don't we? Vultures, the lot of them, really. Or most of them, at least. There are always good ones, like Rochelle Lee. But put your trust in the wrong person and you'll find yourself eagerly picked mm, upon. Yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. A sweetie? A sweetie? How is he being a sweetie? He's left you. You don't even know where he is. Bloody that hell. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. Right. Sorry. I'm hungry. Perhaps I'm being a bit too rash, a bit too hot-headed in divulging details. But I thought myself clever with the plan to dress it up as gossip. Marianne's raised brow makes me make me unsure whether she's interested or not. Although that does not make things better, she has no interest and therefore has no hidden intent to utilize whatever I might say to her. They've been married for a long time and they've had a... How do they say it? A rough patch. And you've never had a rough patch before? Okay. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? You were asking for my personal opinion on the matter, ma'am? Do you want me to be honest, or...? Be honest. Be honest with me, Marianne. I don't need someone to sugarcoat it. I'm not some fragile thing that I'm just going to break down at the slightest thing. She hesitates, taking a sip of her coffee while I stay into my own cup of tea. The silence stretches on and I almost believe that she will never answer my question. I suppose that I shouldn't blame her putting her in a tight spot like this. Her hesitation is understandable, though I loathe to admit it. She simply wants this whole thing to stay professional. But then she speaks. If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you, Mr. Wright, isn't it? It's not. It's my turn to hesitate now. I really didn't expect such a straightforward question. And to get to the heart of the matter, I suppose I'm not as clever as I think. I like to think. Oh, she's talking about herself. That her husband's the one with the drinking problem, and she's the one trying to be a good husband. I mean, a good wife. Yes, I think that's what it is. Come on, Jesus Christ. Suppose it is. 
What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But, if the troubled husband with a neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Someone who won't even give him the time of the day. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. That's just my two pence worth, of course. So you're saying we... they should divorce? Nothing as drastic as that. If they're afraid that it might lead to just that, then maybe that is what's meant to happen in the first place. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. But it's just a short hiatus, is all. Or, you know, couples therapy? Oh, Jesus, okay. Look, I'm really not the best person to ask about relationships. So green of salt and all that. She trails off having said her piece and leaves nothing but the smell of coffee and Earl Grey between us. There's a calm despite the nature of what has just been discussed. To say that her words make me start to think is an understatement. To say that I'm not considering her advice is a lie. To say that this might just be the calm before the storm is a possibility. Wow, Jesus. She really considering divorcing him? Well, he is a bit of an asshole. Others have had shorter marriages, yes, but plenty have celebrated long and happy ones as well. My own parents celebrated their choral anniversary before they passed away. But seven years? Seven years isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. It isn't a whole lot of time to see what and where our relationship can bring us. Seven years is a bloody long time! What are you talking about? And at the same time, seven years, well, it hasn't been entirely made up of unhappy years, has it? It won't last forever. It's not supposed to, anyway. I just dread the thought that it might last for a very long time. I dread the thought that these small spats, these little disagreements, will turn into an will turn into an all-out resentment. The idea that we will grow to hate each other with every fiber of our being scares me. I can't even pinpoint the exact moment when our blissful union turned sour. When did he start to seek other women, lacking any ulterior motives? When did we start to cooperate or only to cooperate? I need to suit our materialistic greed and attention-seeking ways. Money and success, fame and glamour. Are those the only reasons we still stay together? Yes, that is the only reason. If I've gathered the story correctly, it's the only reason that you even got married. Shit, that's a, that's a tough one, man. That's, that's real sad. <clears throat> there was a cough before Marianne clears her throat. I must have been quiet for so long and I move to apologize when she stands up. We both end up on our feet, unsure on how to proceed. Some sort of odd, awkward shuffle occurs as we decide whether to sit back down or not. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. It's the party now! Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Alright, alright, alright. The scene outside the parlor is a great organized mess. Aside from our own household help, we hire the service of the temp agency which provides staff for right enterprise in the hospitality sector. Even our very skilled staff cannot undertake a party of their this size on their own. Waiters, busboys, hostesses and their staff ca captains move about in droves, carrying crockery and ser serve way. Why not silverware? Good for sev several dozen people and then some. Okay. Snail! We have a lot to do and I believe we did not hire snails. Your hands! Your hands is here! Snails are for the dishes. Okay. 
Jesus, all right, no problem. A nice sculpture of a reindeer is brought in carefully by a pair. It is followed by a simple cake, just a five, just a five tier, just a five tier. White chiffon one with white chocolate mousse, fresh berries, and a light dusting of edible gold leaves. But despite the fact that I told Marianne how I will attend to all of this, I find myself unable to focus or care for any of it. I still have our discussion running in my mind, and looking at all of this, I only see Luke everywhere. These are all the grand things that Luke wanted to have for the party. I had wanted a small, elegant, and simple gathering with only a select few invited, namely the people who I would actually trust to enter my home. I didn't want any bloody politicians or paparazzi in here, no matter how used I am to catering them. At least be here for your party. Damn it, Luke. Oh, shame, man. I sad. I feel bad for her. One this sad music in the background's not helping. I used to be my own woman who made her own name, her own career, and her own decisions. Sure, I was already the social butterfly that I still am today, but it wasn't all empty, shallow gossip and sitting pretty. I was also lauded, looted, lauded for my, um, for my knowledge and talent. That word took me aback just now. Finance manager wasn't just handed to me, just because my father owned the company. I had insisted that I started at the bottom so I could work my way to the top and prove myself. And I did. I worked numbers, managed budgets, money and accounts, analyzing the competition and market trends. There was the calculation of financial risk, cost reduction opportunities, auditor, liaison, liaison, I don't know, and public relations, supervision of staff and, well, I generally had a huge slew of responsibilities. Admittedly, I was already quite the attention seeker even back then, having dedicated most of my youth craving for my parents' approval. Failing that, I turned to others. Look for praise from anyone who would give it, however fleeting it all was. And Luke, oh Luke, the way he looked at me, the way he watched me and took a genuine interest. He had me disgustingly obsessed since day one, hasn't he? He saw me for me, Hannah Evans, with both my faults and my achievements. The man didn't treat me like some damsel in distress or some prize to be won. I remember the night before we were married, where we talked about everything and anything. From big things like business, society and philosophy, to little things such as what we had for breakfast or whether we like cats or dogs more. We both prefer dogs. Yeah! It's my kind of people, man. I also prefer dogs. Nowadays, I'm just Luke Wright's wife. It's mostly my fault, isn't it? They told me that husbands preferred wives who are docile and subordinate. A woman who will always be there for him, yet would never outshine him in all aspects except beauty. A wife needs to be at home and attend to his needs to have children and to take care of them in his absence. They said I have no business working anymore after I was married. I can blame society. Blame society! Fuck society. Fuck the system. Shit. Don't. But I listened. Before I can fall further into this introspective pit of self-loathing, someone calls for my attention. Who's the it? guests have arrived. Your hands! And Luke? Running a bit late, I'm afraid. No, oh, is he? I guess I'll just do the party on my own then. Okay. Late for his own party. That man, I swear. He's probably looking to make a dramatic entrance knowing him. Open the doors then. We mustn't hurry. Shit, that's sad, man. Cars line up the driveway, peppering the front of the mansion with vehicles of every kind. Okay. A handful of cabs drive off, possibly for those who thought it's too troublesome to bring their own cars. There are at least two different media vans as well. They're all here for what may be considered the biggest event of the year for Luxbourg so far. Who knows what we'll plan for the winter holidays. Welcome! Welcome everyone! Please, make yourselves at home! Is she wearing that dress still? Why don't you wear a different dress? Some of the guests idle, enjoying the warm 
if not strange sunshine we are experiencing before gloomy skies inevitably to return. Such as that young man with his oriental air, ignorant of the looks he receives from women and men alike. What the hell is he doing here? Oh, he's a police officer, isn't he? Be careful with Shirley, all right? Who's Shirley? What Shirley? Ah, she's there. Or well, that rose-haired woman talking on her phone while she looks unsure of why she is here exactly. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. Who? Zack is here! It's her future husband, her love in the starlight. Zack is the one she's supposed to be with. Not Luke. Zack. He talks to a few of the other media crew with an air of familiarity. I was just here a few days ago, yeah. yeah and the inside is huge. But the staff are pretty helpful if you get lost. <laughs> And then there are people like the chief inspector. People who I can never be too sure about. People who stand on the border between being suspicious and being trustworthy. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Oh, God, Husband no. still missing, I see. I don't like him. Mm -mm. He makes me very uncomfortable. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. Yes, hint, hint. The doctors again. Uh, she told me she'll just be in the gardens. Bet she's lying and that she's somewhere around mingling, gossiping with the other ladies. It's no right. offense, but that seems to be all you ladies do at these parties. And aren't you gossiping right now? Yes, well, what about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around. <laughs> you know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. <laughs> Don't tell me, let me guess. He's finally drunken himself to death and not wanting a scandal. You've hidden his body. I didn't expect that. I was wanting to give this housewarming gift to him personally, too. It's a plate that holds a wine glass so he can stop killing himself with liquid lunches. Right. Looks like it's too late for that. Nothing like that. Besides, this is a hardly polite conversation. Oh, relax. I'm just trying to be cheeky to lighten the mood. It's not like I want Luke dead. That smile is off-putting. So the man doesn't serve Dodgy Plonk like the others when I visit, and he pays his respects well enough. I could use a glass of wine or three, actually. Rochelle's been in a horrid mood. Threw a stilettos at me the other day and almost took an eye out. Not sure if this is how it usually goes, but I blame the pregnancy. Oh, great. That's lovely, that is. I wouldn't know, would I? Still no plans for a baby. Well, I guess that's for the best. If it's this bad now, I can't even imagine how bad it'll be when that little baby bump becomes huge. This guy, I don't know. I just, like... I don't like him. I think it's just his voice and the things he says in his face. Just the whole thing in general. Have I mentioned how I don't trust him, no matter how hard I tried to do so? At least he brought a gift, I suppose. Why don't you just go inside and have some wine, Lee? Think I will, thanks. Mm. At the first hour pass us by, the rest of the stragglers and I adjourn to the ballroom. Any latecomers will have the attention of the porter inside. I have other duties to attend to now. Okay. Wow! Everyone's dressed to the nine. Hosting parties is always the same old song and dance, no matter how big or small it is. You make sure your guests are well fed, have good company, and have them genuinely enjoy themselves. So when my opening remarks are done, when the band has started to play and the guests have started eating, I find myself wandering around aimlessly unless I am pulled aside. For a while, I stay with a small group and entertain them before excusing myself. And when they're not anymore watching me, I end up watching them. When they don't listen, I do. A local banker is having trouble with his daughter. He wishes to marry her off, but she wants nothing more but to make music. One of our hotel managers worry about the stolen belongings of one of his patrons, a failing in security which should be brought up to high authority soon. Our mayor, well, his cat died. 
Then there is that rose-haired woman once again. It is hard not to notice her with her distinctive locks. She also lacks the grace that the other ladies have, though that does not make her any less beautiful. Her stance and the air she exudes instead are strong and they make her stand out despite her casual attire. Many men have already given her their attention, though each invitation to dance has been turned down. I approach intrigued, although it is no great mystery what occupies her own attention, with the glances she keeps sending towards the boy with the oriental hair. Ooh, she like him! She remains unaware though, even as I stand beside her, pretending that I am there for a drink. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? You're saying that her clothes are ugly? Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the parvenu, those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? The boy comes over, but I do not. I do. I. I. I, I lost the words now. The boy comes over, but I do nothing to speak any softer. He merely passes by, and it is a wonder he doesn't hear what I say. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down his offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. In all my life, I have never seen a face grow red so fast. The shade of her hair did not help as well. This is the most pink I've seen on a person, really. What? N no, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. Oh, she's loving this man. She's and loving I it. I've been looking at him. Haven't That's you? right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. I waver as I feel the burning of someone's stairs. It is chilling and though I'm used to enduring the gaze of others, this one makes the hairs on my back of my neck stand up. Shit. Shit, man. Who is this chick, man? What is her fucking deal, her fucking story? It is chilling and though I'm used to enduring the... Okay. My attention is pulled from the girl and I see a woman staring. Dark haired and dirty, she looks more like a beggar than a guest. And I have half the mind to call the security at her when her mouth breaks out into a grin. <laughs> All I hear is her laughing. God, dude, I'm getting goosebumps, man. Taunting. Her stare makes my blood run cold. She looks at me like I am nothing but a pig to slaughter for her amusement. It makes my hand shake and I nearly drop my drink. But then in a blink she's gone. And the buzz of the party returns. I'll keep that in mind, but are you alright? Yes, uh, sorry. I just thought I saw something strange. It must be the trick of the light. That is no trick of the lights, woman. It was a full-fledged fucking ghost haunting you. How can it be the trick of the lights? It's a whole bloody person! Anyway, on a right, as you must already know. Rebecca Gales. Rebecca! Gales, Gales, Gales. The, mem the name is familiar, like a fond memory. I recall a kind lady, a private tutor, treated me like her own daughter when I was young. She'd even bring me food when there was no need to do so. Usually stovies, which I honestly hadn't been too keen about, though I ate them nonetheless because she brought them for me. Oh, the professor! Professor? And your little Becky! <sighs> My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And Mom says hi, by the way. 
Yeah, she's the daughter Lydia, of the teacher. Me, little Becky. We met once before. Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. Oh, great. Now we're reminiscing about how dorky I looked when I was younger. Thanks, Mum. And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lad called something with an A. Ash! She's been having a crush since she was a kid. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander, Andrew? Ash! The more I list all her names, the more red and the more quiet Becky gets. She starts to look a bit miserable as her body language shows discomfort and stiffness. Perhaps, have I, perhaps I have triggered a horrid childhood memory. Surely I hadn't been mean when she visited with her mother. I don't quite remember all Ashton! This. Ash! Yeah! What it's... man is that boy? The same one. Oh goodness me, after all these years! I can see why though. He's quite dashing. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down. Oh, come I'm on, so Hannah. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. And a tad bit sad. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Please, Hannah's fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? The idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. Well, look at, um, Rapunzel. It all worked out for her, didn't it? If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? Yes! Yes, you do. You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix mm -hmm. itself on its own. No. Like everything, you have to work at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what do I know? There's a grimace, although she starts to relax around my presence. How long has it been since we met as children? Certainly a long time. She was tiny back then, if I recall correctly. I'm sure correctly. the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. But have you told him how you feel? No. And it's been what? 20 years? Because he's in love with fucking Isabel, okay? 17, actually. But no, not yet. He can be a bit dense. I was hoping that maybe he'd notice on his own and... Well, that won't do. What if you two become husband and wife? He's not to be dense when he's sworn himself to another person. Why, you might just as well consider leaving before the day's even begun. If that happens, I'll have to give him a good ear bashing, won't I? Whoever anyone ends up with, it's not going to be a perfect relationship anyway. There's going to be things you'll love and things you'll hate about the other person. We're just humans. It's funny. Here I am, trying to give you advice when you did the very same thing back then. I remember you giving me a makeover when we were still kids. And you were the first I told anyone about my... <laughs> crush. I do remember now that she mentions it. Did I give her that yellow summer dress or the pink blouse and petticoat? She must have kept some of what I said in mind. It feels ridiculous remembering all of that years later, talking about boys and how they go crazy for pretty girls. As if it's some gospel every woman should adhere to. It was so easy to say such things then, with me not knowing any better. Though looking at her now, she must have kept some of what I said in mind. Perhaps I did say something good at that time. Enough for her to take it to heart. But all that didn't matter in the moment as I'm all over what she just said in my head. What Becky told me is very different from what Marianne told me. There is no time to ponder over that, however, as I hush descends upon the once lively crowd. The music of strings and the chatter slowly to a grinding halt as the doors from the foyer opens. The last of the latecomers should have arrived moments ago. 
and anyone else this late would simply be too embarrassed to show their face. So this can only be one person, or rather, one man. There's only one man who is audacious enough to arrive at his own party so late. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. Jesus Christ. This guy, this guy. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. You welcome. I welcomed everyone, you bastard. Jesus. Unlike I, who was raised in the spotlight and simply grew used to its presence, he sorted out every chance he could, even when there was no spotlight that shone. And I'll never put it against him when, sh when he smiles like that. He did so quite brilliantly. You can tell by the way people's eyes light up as he speaks. How they listen enraptured, even if all he's doing is a simple greeting. Not a single second is wasted as I excuse myself from Becky's side and make my way to the Welcome Luke's. one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> so, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. They're just eating it up, aren't they? Guests approach us left and right to shake Luke's hand and greet him personally, praises on their lips. It is because of this that I do not see her. I do not see her until she's dangerously close with fury in her eyes and she's already spitting venom. Who's that? Your hands restrains her, taking care not to unnecessarily harm the pregnant woman. But that does little to deter her rage, and the man has no choice but to let her go, lest an unborn child is hurt. Although it might be too late for that, as I see an empty glass of wine in her hand. How much is she in bed? Are you feeling ill, what Rochelle? You? Rochelle? Perhaps you need to sit down and... No! Shut it, you monster! I ain't talking to you! I'm talking to this scumbag over here! You bloody bastard, standing there with your smarmy smile. She interrupts me, jabbing her finger in my direction before she rounds on Luke. Why is her friend fucking uh, messing up here? What the hell is going on? Why is she drinking? Watch your tongue. You're on thin ice, Rochelle. Where's your husband? Who even invited you? I did. And I told you with great emphasis not to. Now we have a drunk, hormonal, pregnant woman causing a stir. What is even going on? I'm just about to ask that exact same I thing. I don't know. But Rochelle, do calm down before you hurt yourself. I can't understand a word you're saying. Where is that husband of yours? Lee, collect your wife right now. Collect her? Fuck! Yes, Don't you fucking talk like I'm not here and you're not responsible, you ass! Responsible? For what? You told me that I should wait for you in the gardens! What? What? <laughs> what is going on? Excuse me. What is this nonsense you're going on about? Crazy talk. That's all it is. Just completely and utterly mad. What's going on? What's going on? If I don't want to jump, I don't want to jump to conclusions here. But is it what I think it is? It is, isn't it? Has anyone seen the chief inspector? Oh my god! I am pregnant with your little bastard. What? You promised me you'll take responsibility. What the fuck? God damn it, Luke! I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me! Her best friend! What? What? What do you mean you're pregnant with? Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! 
I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband. I told you to leave that damn wife of yours. What the? What? I'm at a loss for words. Look at her. Does she look like she wants a baby? Does she look like she can take care of a baby? Ooh. 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 Oof. Oof. Guys, no. Mm -mm. I think I'm gonna leave the episode there. At that breaking point right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Leave me some suggestions and comments and just tell me how you feel. And, this is like days of our lives or, or um, you know, like uh, the Desperate Housewives series. It's just, it's all coming out, man. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time. Until then, have an awesome day and I'm in the gaming world. Cheers. Oh my. I winked too late. <laughs>